In this module, we'll take up the concept of electric potential. An electric field can do work on a charge. It can apply a force, and if that charge moves across some displacement, then it can actually do work. And that means it can change the kinetic energy of that charge. Back from our previous work in Chapter 6, work is equal to a force into a displacement. So in the case of the electric force, that would be Fe, dotted into some displacement. And if the force is changing in magnitude and direction, we know we would have to add these up over small little intervals. In our case, the force is Q times the electric field dot into this displacement. Or Q E delta X times the cosine of the angle between these two vectors. Now in most of the problems that we have in this course usually, this cosine will turn out to be 1. And so we have QE times delta X, or QED a lot of times, because the distance, the delta X, will just be some distance D. So a lot of times, problems will simplify to something that looks like this, where this is the distance, This is the magnitude of the field, and this is the charge. In those problems where it doesn't simplify because the electric field is changing and therefore the force is changing, then it's usually better to work under the area under the curve. In this case, we say that the work is equal to the area under the force position curve. This is the same thing that we had back in chapter 6. However, I'm going to rewrite it and say that the work is equal to Q times the area under the electric field position curve. And I'll show you that these two statements are equivalent in a minute. How do I do that? Well, we're saying that back in Chapter 6, when we studied work and energy, and this was X here, and this was force. Force here was just QE in our case. And maybe you had something that looked like this. Then to find the work done over some displacement, say from X1 to X2, we simply found this area under this curve. And that was the work. So go back and look up the old modules on work if you forgot this. But here's the thing. This Q is like a number. Maybe it's two coulombs. And all it's doing is just changing the height of this graph. So we could factor that out and say this is Q times this graph. And that graph would look the same, except its height would be changed. And we could find the area under this graph, say from here to here. And then multiply that by Q. That's not a G, that should be a Q. We'll find out later that this area under this electric field position graph has a name too. The negative of this area is something we would call voltage or electrical potential in a little bit. Alright, so that's the idea. Find the area under the curve, or if the 
force is constant over the thing, just use Q times E times delta X. So let's look at some example problems so using these ideas. A proton moves from X equals 0 meters to X equals 2.4 meters and it experiences an electric field in the X direction of 5,000 Newton per Coulomb I hat. Calculate the work done by the electric field upon this charge. Well this is one where we can just apply the straight definition F times delta X so we have Q E delta X. In this case the displacement is 2.4 meters I hat and the electric field is in the same direction so the angle theta is 0 degrees and the cosine is 0 is 1 so that's why there's no cosine here. The work would then be equal to 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs times the electric field 5 times 10 to the third Newton per coulomb times delta x 2.4 meters and if you put those in you will get a number of 1.92 times 10 to the minus 15 joules. Now it turns out that because of the small charts that exist on protons, electrons, and other particles, the joule is not really the most convenient unit to use for energy. Well, later we'll come back and then talk a little bit more about this, but there is a unit called the electron volt. And what we do for that is we treat this 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs as simply the charge plus E. And that E goes into the units. So we simply multiply these two numbers, 5 times 10 to the third times 2.4. And if we do that, we get 12,400, I'm sorry, 12,000. And this Newton meter, which becomes a joule per coulomb in a minute, we're going to tell you is a volt. So this becomes an electron volt, or 12 keV. Like I said, we'll come back to this in a little bit. But this is a more convenient unit of energy than is our normal joule. The conversion between them is 1.6 by 10 to the minus 19 joules is equal to one electron volt. And like I said, this is another energy unit which is much more convenient in working problems involving electricity and particle physics. And so we prefer it to the SI unit of joules. Let's look at a different one. Following this same thing, they might ask you something about the speed. If the proton is initially at rest, what will be its speed at x equal 2.4 meters? Well, this is basically checking to see if you remember other things back previously. The net work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. This is something we studied a long time ago, which means that's equal to 1 half mv final squared minus 1 half the initial speed times the mass squared, but it was initially at rest. So the final speed is the square root of 2 times the net work done on the particle divided by the mass. Now in our case the work was done by the electric force. So the speed is the square root of 2 times, we go back up here and get my energy unit, 1.92 10 to the minus 15 joules and then I need to divide by the mass of the proton now that's a constant that's given in UIL and AP exams or it's in the back of your book and I happen to look mine up and I found that it's 1.67 by 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. And I punch that in and I get 
2 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. So although the proton has very little energy, it's actually traveling at a very fast speed. It just doesn't have much mass. And it can take that energy and do a lot of things. Proton therapy is seen as one of the best methods for killing cancer, for instance, because you can drop the energy exactly where you want inside a cancer cell without giving side effects due to depositing energy into healthy cells on the way in. All right, another type of problem. You have a one nanocoulomb of charge that moves from zero to four meters on the influence of a varying electric field. This time they give me a field with a graph. So in this case, I need to find the area under the curve. So I'm looking for finding this triangle here, this rectangle, and this other triangle. So one, two, three areas to add up and then I need to multiply that by Q to find the work done. So to do this, the work is equal to Q times area. For Q, I have to look to see what the charge was in the problem. It says the charge was a 1 nanocoulomb. So I have 1 by 10 to the minus 9 coulombs. For the area, I have 1 half times 2 meters times 8 kilovolts, sorry, 8 K newtons per coulomb, plus I have 1 meter times 8 K newtons per coulomb, plus I have 1 half times 1 meter times 8 K newtons per coulomb. So the first term here, that's 8,000 joules. The coulombs cancel, boom, boom. Meters times a kilonewton is a kilojoule. So I have 1 times 10 to the minus 9. And like I said, this is 8 kilojoules. The next one I have 8 kilojoules. And the last one I have is 8 divided by 2, 4 kilojoules. So that's 1 by 10 to the minus 9. 8, 8, 16, 4 is 20, 20 kilojoules. punch that all in, that's 10 to the third. So if I've done that right, I should have, that looks like 10 to the minus 16. I'm sorry, this is 10 to the minus nine. 10 to the minus three, that would be 20 times 10 to the minus six joules or 20 micro joules. And that finishes that particular problem. All right, that deals with work in the electric field. I'll see you on another video.